Immediately when I entered the space at the consortium, I had an idea to completely cover the space. And it was actually one of the first ideas of the show to make a total painting in using the architecture of the space to stretch maybe an entire canvas through the whole room. And actually, the room could contain a full painting. However, I realized that through the course of developing the project that it could be much stronger to punctuate the room and almost as though there was two layers of paintings in the room, one that is the total space and another that's like placed on top of the room, which is punctuated with all of these works. Perhaps this idea of layering comes through more apparent in the painting I stand in front of and that is further facing me uh, because this also lifts the paintings off the walls and into the space and further emphasizes this idea of a second room or a second painting that's behind everything else. So for some reason, recently in the news, there was some reports more recently, like in popular kind of news stories about Stendhal syndrome and Maybe part of my approach has to do a little bit with that because growing up in New York, my education comes a lot from visiting museums, which are really massive collection, like at the Metropolitan Museum, for example. And that neighborhood of New York where all those museums are located uptown uh, is a huge source for this show. I was interested in a kind of biography. There was also a Carol Lee Schneeman exhibition that was just put on in New York, uh, whose work I really admire. And the idea of a body of work as a diary and a kind of like a account of your life was really interesting to me. If it was possible to parallel a diary with a projection of oneself onto a historical reference or to project even onto an art object and to parallel your own biography with a historic object was something that was a big part of this show. It started when I was really intrigued by the paintings of Francois Boucher at the Frick Collection in New York. And there's a room that's kind of off to the side in the museum. It doesn't have many paintings in it, but actually has uh, decorative paintings that are inset inside of the wall. And the play between class, high and low, of value in terms of a decorative object or a framed painting uh, was at play in this room because these paintings were traveling for years, going between different collections, and ended up in this kind of pseudo-period room in New York. It was fascinating to me, this play, that you could continue to fantasize about 
an object's history, and fantasize about where culture originates. And somehow, when I came back to Paris recently to start working, this room came really forward in my mind. Actually, when I was visiting a beautiful space called Le Doc in Paris, it's an artist-run squat, and when I visited that space in its kind of derelict uh, courtyard, I immediately thought about this room um, and a kind of bucolic fantasy that artists continue to promote and felt very present for me there. Someone who I think about a lot right now and who I think comes forward in these pieces is the late artist, curator, writer, Ian White. And his story had a lot to do with social organization. And he was really interested in uh, also gardens and the structure of movement of people. I was interested in this at first because I was interested in theater and theatrical space and also choreography and dance. The idea that you could see something from above was brought to me from dialogues with dancers, that a room could be organized, seen from above and not from the front. And this would be a way to organize yourself if you were doing your own dance or choreographing something for other people. Once that was introduced to me, I then understood that there was deeper, more complex threads in that very simple idea. You can see in like this work here, uh, with this kind of enlarged garden map, that there's almost an organic or kind of biologic form which is a facsimile from a uh, found material from uh, the Chateau Bellevue garden. And even this idea that you could transpose your own sort of inside space onto like an architectural plane became really exciting for me because this idea of scale totally explodes and you don't uh, understand anymore if you're looking at something so deep inside of you or something completely outside of you. So the idea of how space can be socially organized in this way in terms of scale became really interesting. And the starting point of the show was a color palette that had a lot to do with Rococo painting. And the palette was uh, pinks, light blues, a kind of European skin tone. Um, that was really interesting to me because I realized uh, through my research that Rococo painting has a lot to do with uh, cosmetics, with makeup. That's something that I found really interesting because uh, there's a proliferation now of popular media and popular content dealing with cosmetics. I think the reason why I was interested in incorporating ceramics into this show was because I would like to displace some of the hierarchy that a painting could hold. And culture is deep, so it's important also to give homage to the many facets of influences. I think ceramics represent something much more holistic than framed paintings can. And the ceramic embodies a very deep knowledge of culture, while painting on canvas is more isolated in its form due to its, also its fragility. I think the two paintings that are f facing each other, and you can see from the front and the back, uh, definitely play with a kind of hierarchy of form and space. But 
I also was interested mainly in creating a deeper movement in the room. Because when you see that, you automatically can imagine everything lifting and a kind of floating image or a floating space can appear to you, that there's a possibility that things can shift, that the order can shift or the organization can move. That was important to me. Yeah. Thank you.